Hi everyone, we're continuing on with our tour of the cranial bones of the skull. Now we're going to cover the sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone is a complex bone that's wedged in the middle of the skull. However, it's best to first study the sphenoid bone in isolation. So here we have an isolated sphenoid bone. This is a sphenoid bone that's been taken from another multicolored skull. This is the side of the sphenoid bone that can be seen from the base of the skull. This is the same side of the sphenoid bone that can be seen from the base of the multicolored skull. This, however, is the side of the sphenoid bone that can be seen from within the cranial cavity of the skull. You cannot see this side on the multicolored skull because the skull cap is not removable. Let's start naming the parts of the sphenoid bone from the cranial side of this isolated sphenoid bone. This is going to be the anterior aspect of the sphenoid bone, and this is going to be the posterior aspect of the sphenoid bone. Some have described the sphenoid bone as looking like a butterfly. Can you see the butterfly? Well, you know how a butterfly has two sets of wings? The sphenoid bone also has two sets of wings. The more anterior set of wings are known as the lesser wings. The more posterior set of wings are known as the greater wings. The descriptions lesser and greater refer to the relative sizes of these wings. The central depression in the middle of the sphenoid bone is known as the cella tersica. Cella tersica literally translates to the Turkish saddle. If you want to know why the structure is named for a Turkish saddle, stop the video now and search for Turkish saddle on Google or whatever. The pituitary gland, the master gland of the endocrine system, resides within the cella tersica. These diagonal slits are described as the superior orbital fissures. Right? They are described as orbital fissures because they can be appreciated from inside the orbital cavities as well. So now going to the multicolored skull, here we can see the same superior orbital fissures at the back of the orbital cavities. Now at the same time, you can also see the inferior orbital fissure. So this diagonal crack right here and this diagonal crack right here are together known as the inferior orbital fissures. So you can see how the superior orbital fissures and inferior orbital fissures run at right angles to one another at the posterior aspect of your orbital cavities. Now the inferior orbital fissures are on your list of landmarks associated with the maxillae. That's another bone that you're going to go over. The inferior orbital fissures are basically gaps between the sphenoid bone and the maxillae, which is in purple. Okay, so let's go back to the isolated sphenoid bone. All right, these holes that are medial to the superior orbital fissures, here they are on this side and over here on this side, all right, are known as the optic canals. The optic canals can also see, be seen within the orbital cavities. So here are the optic canals as seen from the posterior aspect of the orbital cavities. You can see that I'm actually sticking this wood marker through it, through the right orbital cavity. Your optic nerves travel through the optic canals. These nerves carry visual information from the eye to the brain. Let's go back to the plain skull and identify the markings of the sphenoid bone that we just reviewed. So I'm gonna open up the skull cap here and we're going to look at the sphenoid bone from its cranial aspect. So as you can see right here, here's the butterfly's wings. Can everybody see that? All right. So we can see right here the superior orbital fissures, these uh, slit-like structures, just medial to that, we can see our optic canals. I'm sticking one of the wood pointer sticks through this one here and then this one here. The central depression is going to be the cella tersica. Now the sphenoid bone, like the frontal bone, contains sinuses. These sinuses are referenced on your term sheet as the sphenoid sinuses. 
In order to appreciate the sphenoid sinuses, however, you must view a mid-sagittally sectioned model of the skull. All right, so next up is the ethmoid bone. See you soon.